So Bush is going to be at the All Star game. He's going to be the starter uh, this coming. Which Wednesday. means he gets to be the target essentially <laughs> yeah. as the All Star goalie. Yeah, there's a lot of defense played in those type of games. Um, but also Brett Smith will be making the trip. What kind of difference has he made? Because he's kind of it didn't take him long to find his niche on this team and really fit in with these guys. Well, I think there's two guys that have really made a tremendous difference with the leadership. And one guy you may not quite think of usually, and that's Brent Henley. Um, he's done a wonderful job with the defensemen. And Brent has a great way of always putting things into perspective. Like, let's face it, the last 10 games, the Comets haven't played great. They've won, some, they've won more than their share because they've outscored teams, but they have not played very well defensively. And that's as a team thing, not the, necessarily just the defense. They've given up a lot of breakaways. And, and Brent will be the first guy to say, you know, we've got to tighten that up right now, even, if, even while they're winning. And, and Smitty has done a really good job with some of that, too. Um, Smitty just, he's got one speed. And it's like, that's what scored the game-winning goal yesterday, is he just hustled his butt off to get to the puck before the, the defenseman did. And he heard, you know, Bobby Shomont coming from behind and was able to whip the pass out front to him. Um, I think Brett, having been a captain of a championship team, You've got two guys there right now who've been captains of championship teams with him and, and Colin Chalk. And it just makes a tremendous difference because, you know, Colin may say, say, say something one way and then Brett can say the same thing in a different way. So maybe if a guy didn't quite get it from one way or if he didn't understand what Al was talking about, he can feel comfortable going to any of those three guys or Kaylee or Nick or anybody and asking and saying, okay, what if I got this right, you know, and, and there's a lot of communication on this team that wasn't quite there as much last year. As far as this team goes on special teams, I mentioned earlier, number one in the league, I should have quantified, number one in the league in terms of power play. They're converting just a shade over 25%. You mentioned it's even better on the road. It's like 29 or something. It's ridiculous. What, what is it about this power play that has allowed these guys to be that successful? Okay, they changed the power play. It used to be you had the two guys up top and then the three guys down low cycling. Well, they changed the power play to more of an umbrella. You've got Colin Chalk on one side on the left wing. You've got Frankie DeAndres up top. You've got Jamie Milam on the side. And basically what they do is you rotate Bobby Schomont and Jesse Benefield and those guys down low. So there's always somebody in front sliding to the high slot. And then Colin can work down or Jamie can work down. And you're basically overloading the zones. You've got four guys there. You've got to keep one guy up top on the penalty kill. So you've got four on three down low because you've isolated it. And that creates a lot of uh, shots in the slot for guys like Bobby and Jesse and Kaylee's been getting some shots there too. I mean, you've really opened it up in the middle low to, to get to the rebounds and create those shots. And if it doesn't work, you've still got Frankie and Jamie up high blasting away, but you've also got guys in front now creating distractions. You know, Henley's a big guy. <laughs> A guy that looks like he can throw down. The, the folks always want to talk about fights. Sure. But, and this team has over six, 606 penalty minutes, over 600 penalty minutes right now. But it's not been an overly... Nobody wants to mess yeah, with Yeah, it's them. not been an overly right. physical season in terms of the number of fights that we've seen. Uh, Harkening back to the, the McMillan, Morasti, those kind of guys. I think the Comets actually lead the league in that, though. I didn't know that. They did it as of a couple weeks ago. They had the most majors. Really? Yeah. That surprises me. That's yeah. a stat I did not look up. But, you know, you notice like the Evansville game a couple weeks ago where uh, Schrock went after Mackway and Henley went after Saroy. And, you know, I mean, what's interesting is you've got getting Brent Henley allowed everybody else to slot down to face more of their weight class, essentially. So you got the super heavyweight big brother in Brent. Hmm. And he is big brother, too. I mean, it's like, you know, Kaylee can say hey, to Mike Saroy, hey, Check out Big Brother. He'd like to talk to you for a second, you know, and he doesn't have to worry about it. Well, then that lets Kelly go down. Okay, you got a weight class. Then you got Dustin Molly and you got Bryant Molly, who aren't afraid of anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, Stephen Thorne, he ain't afraid of anybody. That kid, maybe he should be in some ways, but he's, <laughs> he's just nuts enough that he goes out and he doesn't care. You know, and you've already seen Chris Auger get in a fight. You've seen Brett Smith get in a fight. You've seen pretty much everybody at one time or another Benefield. go at it. Oh, yeah, Benny, too. You know, Chalker, you know, he went after Lindbergh that game. You know, I mean, everybody there, that's part of the tightness of this team. I'll tell you what, the second game in Rapid City about a month ago, 
the players were praying they'd score one more goal because they wanted to let it all hang out. They were so mad at Les Rainey and some of those guys. They were like, oh, please, let it be on, let it be on. They, were, they didn't care they were that mad at Les Rainey and some of those guys. They just wanted to go, go nuts against Rapid City. And I think that, was, that kind of thing has really tightened the bond of everybody, too. As we head into the second half of the season, what are you looking to see from this team to know that it's not going to be a case of black and white in the first half and the second half? What do they need to do to keep it up? Well, I think the biggest thing I've noticed this year is that when Al Sims makes adjustments, they all follow it. And that's Chalker, that's Smitty, and that's Henley reinforcing all of that. So I don't think you're going to see any major slumps. Like the guys talked about a week or so ago, they knew it was going to end. They knew that they were, they were due for a bad slide. But they were ready to use that as an example of how to teach to get it back to where it needed to be. And I thought that was amazing because they could have jumped on the guys then, but they knew that it wouldn't be as successful because you're winning and you kind of blow stuff off. And, but they were kind of looking forward to having a couple losses in a way because they knew that whatever they had to say would be much more effective and much more listened to by everybody once they had that happen. That's what happened last week. And, and when you're playing Dayton three games in a row, I think now starting Thursday with Thursday's practice is when they're really going to work hard to reinforce some of that stuff and bring it back up. The other thing is they have had injuries. They haven't had a major injury. They haven't had Chalk go out. They haven't had Smith go out. They haven't had Nick go out. But it's been really, really fun to watch how Tom Mealy has come in and filled in and David Steranke, I thought he had a good game yesterday, and I think he's going to get better with more playing time. It's really fun to watch how these kids seem to take the opportunity to step up more and do a little bit more. And, you know, I mean, Stefan Thorne has been a really great surprise. I mean, he, we're learning half of what he can do so far when they're using him on the penalty kill. Who knew he could play? He could kill penalties. I mean, really, nobody had a clue that kid could kill penalties. I think he's got two shorthanded goals. I mean, there's all kinds of things that some of these kids can do that we don't know about yet, like jam risk. That kid has no idea how good he's going to be. Right. You know, I mean, it's fun to watch these kids get better and keep progressing, and they have so far. I can't wait to see how they are you know, towards the end of the season and, and what they're going to be able to figure out they can do. All right. It should be a very interesting second half of the season. and Couldn't get much better than the first half we've already had. For Blake Sebring, I'm Glimmerini. We'll see you again next week.